Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy here for your daily dose of the roars as I scream about the technology industry so I can earn some money for Silicon Dojo. Free to end user hands on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. If you're interested in attending an in person class, take a look at siliconDojo.com. And if you want to support the projects that I do, there is a donor box link down below. And so I think this is an interesting story simply because of a story that I talked about yesterday yesterday, right? So I talked yesterday about how HP, uh, HP Enterprise, at least, HPE and Dell have been downgraded by, I think it's Morgan Stanley, because basically Morgan Stanley thinks their business is going to flop in this new AI-centric world where AI is basically eating all of the hardware. Right, so we talked about this before, where Dell, it's looking like Dell will receive only 40% of the RAM that it orders, uh, you know, going into the future. And so that's the thing. So AI is taking off, but they consume all the hardware. So other companies that need computer hardware, they're, they're, they're sucking wind. And so one of the interesting things to be thinking about in a capitalist society is if companies start sucking wind in one area, how, how are they going to try to save money in other areas and uh, yeah, yeah, if you've been following me for any length of time, you will realize it'll be the stupidest way possible. <laughs> it will be the stupidest way possible for an amount of money that seems absolutely ridiculous as in ridiculously small. So this is coming from Ars Technica, and I think this is interesting. Dell, uh, HP and Dell disable HEVC support built into their laptops CPUs. Uh, so this is the codec standard uh, for a lot of the videos uh, that you watch. So back in the day, it used to be H.264 when I started doing videos back in 2008. A while ago, it became H.265. The important thing to understand is this is actually this is actually a product, right? It's a product that you don't really see per se, but it is a product with its own licensing scheme. One of the curious things is back when I started doing Everyman IT back in 2008, I actually had a license of the H.264 codec in my file cabinet because since I was running my servers and doing my own encoding and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to make sure I was on the right side of the law for, for licensing considerations, that type of thing. Thankfully for me, I think with H.264, they turned it into like a free license uh, at some point, and then I went to YouTube anyway, so YouTube dealt with it. But the important thing to understand is with these uh, these li these, these uh, encoding and decoding licenses uh, that they can charge for it, <clears throat> and they will charge for it. And if you have companies that don't want to pay that fee, literally the $800 or $1,000 lap laptop that you buy from these companies literally might be needed capped uh, out of the gate. A lot of people give me crap uh, for buying Macs, right? They're like, oh, Eli, if you're a real computer person, you wouldn't buy a Mac which is a weird story on its own, uh, or that Macs are too expensive. One of the things that I do like with Macs, though, is you basically know what the hell you're gonna get, right? It, it may be kneecapped. I'm not, even, I'm not even gonna lie about that. It may be kneecapped in certain uh, situations, but you understand what the kneecapping is. The problem you get to in the PC world <laughs> is you can have two PCs side by side that damn near look identical with damn near the same price and the actual performance you will get out of the different PCs will be astronomically different. It will be a massive difference. And that's what's happening here with these HEVC uh, codecs is it appears that HP and Dell do not want to pay uh, for the hardware. So on the CPUs themselves, they can do hardware encoding and decoding. So they're literally disabling that. But when they disable that, like disable that, what the, that is for is basically when you go to watch videos. So when you go to watch Netflix, when you go to watch YouTube, when you go to watch these other things, right? They're using those particular codecs if if the hardware decoding has been disabled because Dell doesn't want to pay a quarter for that $800 system you purchased from them all of your all of a sudden your computer is acting quirky and so this is yeah this is this is going to be 2026 for you this is going to be 2026 some Dell and this is the other interesting thing some and this is what i hate about the pc industry too you can you can have two you can have two laptops from the same manufacturer and some basic things with them will be different
Some Dell and HP laptop owners have been befuddled by their machine's inability to play HEVC 8.265 content in web browsers despite their machine's processors having integrated decoding support. So understand this, the decoding support is built into the processors but it's not working for some reason. Laptops with sixth generation Intel Core and later processors have built in hardware support for ATVC decoding and encoding. AMD has made laptop chips supporting the codec since 2015, so 10 to 11 years, right? However, both Dell and HP have disabled this feature on some of their popular business notebooks. HP discloses this in their data sheets for the affected laptops, which include the HP ProBook uh, uh, 460G11, ProBook, ProBook 465G11, and EliteBook, EliteBook 665G11. Quote, hardware acceleration for Kodak 8.265 ATVC is disabled on this platform. So it exists. They simply disable it. Despite this notice, it can be it can still be jarring to see a modern laptop's web browser eternally load videos that play easily in media players. As a member of a group for system administrators on Reddit recent, uh, recalled recently, quote, people with older hardware were not experiencing problems, whereas those with newer machines needed to either have the HVC codec from Microsoft Store removed entirely from or have hardware acceleration disabled in their web browser web app, which causes a number of other problems. For example, no background blurring and conference programs significantly degraded system performance. So this component that's already on the CPU, that has been on CPUs for a decade at this point in time, is being disabled. Owners of some uh, Dell laptops are also experiencing this as the OEM has also disabled HEVC hardware decoding in some of its laptops. This information, however, isn't that easy to find. For example, the product page for the Dell uh, 16 plus two and one, which has HEVC hardware decoding disabled, makes no mention of HEVC. There's also no mention of HEVC in the notes, cautions, and warnings or specification section on the laptop's online owner's manual. So they do this, they disable this thing that basically you expect it to be there, you take it for granted, and then, and then they obfuscate the fact that it's gone. When reached for comment, representatives from Dell, uh, HP and Dell didn't explain why the companies disabled ATVC hardware decoding on their laptop's processors. A statement from an HP spokesperson said, quote, in 2024, HP disabled uh, H.265 codec uh, hardware on select devices, select devices, including the 600 series G11, 400 series G11, and 200 series G9 products. Customers requiring the ability to encode or decode ATVC content on one of the impacted models can utilize licensed third-party software solutions that include ATVC support. Check with your preferred video player for ATVC software support. So they remove the support from the system and then they're like, you can figure it the fuck out yourself. Isn't, isn't that the HP we all know and, and despise? Isn't that why I haven't touched an HP machine in fucking 15 goddamn years? I wouldn't wipe my ass with an HP laptop, it's, it's, just good, it's just good to know that that advice is still accurate in 2025. Uh, Dell's media relations team shared a similar statement. ATVC uh, video playback is available on Dell's premium systems and in select standard models equipped with hardware or software such as integrated 4K displays, discrete graphics cards, Dolby Vision, or CyberLink Blu-ray software. On other standard and base systems, ATVC playback is not included, but users can access ATVC content by purchasing an affordable third-party app from the Microsoft Store for the best experience with high resolution content, customers are encouraged to select systems designed for 4K or high performance needs. So you buy a brand new laptop from Dell in 2025, expecting basic compatibility, and their advice for, to you is go to the Microsoft store and find something. Anyways, <laughs> again, again, yes, it may be expensive. But yes, I also do know what the hell I get when I buy the damn thing.
Uh, while HP's Dell, uh, while HP's and Dell's reps didn't explain the company's motives, it's possible that the OEMs are looking to minimize costs, and this is the concerning thing, uh, since OEMs may pay some or all of the licensing fees associated with HEVC hardware decoding and encoding support, as well as some, as some or all of the royalties per number of devices uh, that they uh, sell with HEVC uh, hardware decoding and encoding support. Chip makers may take some of the burden off of OEMs, but companies don't typically publicly disclose these terms. The OEMs disabling codec hardware also comes as associated costs for international video compression standard are set to increase in January as licensing administrator uh, Access Advanced announced in July per a breakdown from Patent Pool Administration VIA Licensing Alliance royalty fees for HEVC for over 100,001 units are increasing from 20 cents each to 24 cents each in the United States. To put that into perspective, in Q3 uh, 2025, HP sold uh, 15 million laptops and desktops, and Dell sold 10 million laptops and desktops per Gartner. So, so therefore, by not putting this HEVC support in, they can, I can, but it's real. I mean, 15 million laptops, a quarter of 15 million laptops is like, I don't know, $3.2 million. So they can, they can save $3.2 million by, by not, not including a 25 cents worth of licensing on the laptop you, put, you spent many hundreds of dollars to buy. Um, so this, this is, uh, again, it's going to be curious going into the uh, uh, 2020, 2026 era and seeing what happens uh, to all of our computers. Uh, I think it's going to be an absolute crap show, especially what's going to happen when a lot of these old school computer manufacturers uh, start failing. Like that's one of the big things to be concerned about is when these companies start failing, so they really do not have a path to the future, but they're also not quite dead yet. What they're gonna do is they're gonna to start trying to extract more profit however they can. They either jack up the prices on things <clears throat> or they start removing things that you expect to be there uh, in order to save the cost on licensing or whatever else. This is going to become a bigger and bigger issue for anybody supporting these systems because all of a sudden, you're just gonna start getting weird fucking issues that now it's gonna take your tech staff hours and hours and hours to troubleshoot and figure out what the problem is, right? These fuckers, these fuckers save 25 cents uh, per computer that goes out uh, <clears throat> by taking out that license. But you think about it, right? If you, if you have desktop support in your company, a desktop support person, one, once you include taxes and insurance and everything else that goes along with them, it's probably gonna cost you about 50 bucks an hour, somewhere between 40 to $50 an hour. Right, and so if you buy a batch uh, of these uh, laptops, you know during a particular refresh cycle, they go out to all of your staff. They're trying to use Zoom. They're trying to use any of these other products uh, that use video encoding and decoding. And they're running into problems now. All of a sudden, that forty, fifty dollar an hour employee may take a week or two to figure out what the fuck the problem is and to figure out how to get around that problem, be able to come up with a solution. So basically in order for Dell and HP to, sell, to save 25 cents per computer, or even maybe a few bucks per computer, it's gonna cost the enterprise thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to solve the problems that these jackass companies have basically uh, put in this, uh, the supply chain. And, uh, and yeah, uh, as I say, it's, it's only gonna get worse. <laughs> it's only going to get worse. So that's why when I get my next computer, I will buy an Apple. <laughs> Yeah, look at that apple sheep. Look at that fucking apple sheep. Yeah, he expects to like buy a computer and then and then use it. <laughs> you look at Eli. Eli, yeah, yeah. When Eli turns his laptop on, he expects to actually be able to do profitable work. That's that's the kind of sheep that Eli is. So what do you think about this? What do you think about what HP and Dell are doing this? What do you think about the hardware support being on the CPU? They just refuse to buy the license, which then means they are, they are um, disabling it on their systems and causing the customer's problems. 
How do you feel about that? How do you how do you feel about the PC ecosystem going into 2026? Put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a dumbass. Just be a real Luttonick and put that strong American comment down below. Do you remember I scream about the world of technology in order to be able to fund the Silicon Dojo? Free to the end user, hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. We just did a class on AI and web scraping. We're going to have a class on extending AI capabilities with REST APIs in a couple of weeks. We're going to have another class on AI computer vision with something called Moon Dream uh, in December. If you can come to these in-person classes, do take a look at silicondojo.com to see what our schedule is. Do remember uh, that a free to the end user classes is not free. That's why we have a donor box link down below. If you'd like to throw a couple of dollars in, that would be ever so lovely. And with that, see y'all later.